Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoy this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all you would like to share, leave them down in the comment section. Set it off upside down. Set it off are an American rock, punk, pop rock group who just so happen to be another one of my favorite bands of all time. Their infectious melodies, descriptive songwriting, and overall positive attitude from their public persona dug their way into my heart when I discovered them in 2014 with songs like Nightmare and Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. However, this album that I'm going to talk about was the first album from theirs, I Was a Ride or Die For, their third album, Upside Down. A very polarizing album as well. This showed the band diving headfirst into practically pop radio, shedding mostly any former identity of the grand, anthemic, and theatrical ways of their debut album. So just where does this sit with me? Let's find out as I review this album track by track. We'll start off with the singles, with there being three of them. The first one being Uncontainable, which isn't that far of a departure from stuff they were doing on their previous album, Duality. With that being upbeat, motivational anthems. I didn't care for this track on first listen, the chorus felt pretty undercooked, and the whole structure of the song kinda felt phoned in. But after some times of listening, I enjoyed this song more and more. Cody's vocals are exhilarating, appropriate, and lively as the instrumental is pretty gritty, even with the trumpet playing in the background courtesy of Dan. Lyrically, I mean, I did kinda already say what it was, it's very inspirational, singing about never looking back, taking the crown, and coming out the gate swinging. Good song, worth listening. The second single and the album opener, Something New, definitely lives up to that title, as it was something new for the band. Diving into a much poppier sound, and of course, I actually do enjoy it quite a bit. It's not a complete stray away from stuff on Duality, but damn, I can see where the divide from fans would kick in here. The shrill guitar playing is extremely clean for being so gritty, and Max's drums just clash so much. The energy is there, but it just does not feel the same. The chorus almost has drop quality with the group vocals and how it all kind of comes to this grand climax. Regardless of all that though, I still find the song enjoyable. It has a very warm, positive quality to it as Cody sings about wanting to introduce something new. And as an album opener, it's pretty effective. Great song. And the third and final single, Life Afraid, is right up my alley. Extremely poppy, extremely catchy, and I do enjoy it quite a lot. Although it is very not set it off, the bubbly drum, almost some kind of pan flute during the verses, and the chorus have yet another drop like emphasis, combining both actual drums and the poppy drums mentioned earlier. Another big difference is that bridge was just made for live events, separating the ladies to sing one section and the fellas to sing another. Doesn't really blend all that well with the overall vibe and message of the song, which is another one that's very encouraging, motivational, not living your life afraid, admitting that you're alive, breathing, and being happy about it. While I did overplay this song back in the day, getting slightly sick of it in the process, I still enjoy it to this day. Good song. Now for the rest of the tracks. The title song, Upside Down, is easily 100% the poppiest the band has been to date, and most likely ever will reach, and as much as I feel like I shouldn't like it, I really do. The shimmering, glossy synths when paired with the brass work scattered across the track pumps it so full of life, and I still stand by the fact that Cody has one of the most varied, flexible, and genre-bending vocals in modern music today. And not only is that proved later on the record as well, it's shown here with how well the style of pop works for him. And yet again, these lyrics are pretty uplifting about not focusing on the bad things, living for today instead, and seeing the positive in basically any situation he gets himself in. Great song, definitely deserves more love in my opinion. Want is easily the darkest, heaviest, and most haunting tune on this album. And as much as I like to say that to be a massive compliment, it kinda isn't, since practically every other Set It Off album had tracks infinitely darker than this. There's this sweeping eeriness to the synth work on the verses that immediately gets pushed aside for the heavier, denser rock instrumental for the chorus, but as a whole, after four tracks of uplifting melodies, this just kind of feels tagged on to give the album that set it off label that everyone recognizes, and the track and the album kind of suffer because of it, as it's really one of a kind for this LP. Lyrically, it's also a detour about this relationship that's pretty toxic and how it's not what he really wants. As much as I want to like this track more, the slowness, the chugging instrumentation kind of sticks out like a sore thumb for the grand scale of the record. Diamond Girl, however, is probably my favorite song on the entire album, mainly because this is the pop rock style done well. 
Sure, the lyrics may be incredibly corny and cheesy about this girl being a diamond in the rough with all these mentions to gems being priceless and all that sort of thing. However, the star of the show here is easily the trumpet playing on the chorus that mimics the main vocal melody. It gives a tune an almost blissful aspect to it. The rest of the instrumental is pretty solid. The drum work remains fairly in the background and the guitar is pretty minimalistic, letting the shiny synth come through for the most part. While that is still a big leap in genres for the band, it's done extremely concisely and deserves more love from fans. Great song. Tug of War kinda starts this awkward portion in the middle of the album with a couple of pretty mediocre songs. I don't know, this one never sat right with me. It's like a hybrid of pop rock and almost a pure EDM song structure, which really shows in the chorus just being the same line repeated a couple of times and then an actual drop kicks in, although with rockier instrumentation. I get the exact same feeling from the verses. They feel like they were made for a dance track in a club, but the idea was scrapped and given to the band instead. Cody, yet again, is easily the best part of the song. Even in a generic, bordering on boring instrumental, he still sells the track with so much charisma as he sings about being tired of this tug of war game and wanting to let them go. It's definitely not the worst here, but it could have been better. Admit it continues the streak of being in the same vein of tug of war. This one really didn't do too much either. In fact, it's probably my least favorite on the entire album. The chorus feels very clunky, jumbled together, kind of haphazardly, and the instrumental transition doesn't pack that much of a punch. This is also one of the very few tracks in the band's entire discography that doesn't feel like a band effort. Max has been replaced by a skittering trap drum for the most part, Dan's guitar work is drowned out by the engulfing synths, and Zach may as well have been sick on the day of recording because there's literally no bass here. Even Cody is lackluster. His short rap verse just feels really sad, and I can't exactly pinpoint what emotion he's trying to portray as he sings about just admitting your flaws. It's probably one of the worst songs the band has ever done. Pass. Hypnotize digs the album out of the short run it's been in practically single-handedly. This track and Want are quite similar, both stand out stylistically from the rest, but Hypnotize stands out in the best way. Cody's been doing a bit of rapping on some previous set it off tracks, but here, he embraces the style hundredfold, and it's so infectious. The chorus has a wonderful sing-along element to it, while the verses harness almost an early Eminem animosity. And the two don't clash at all, in fact. This instrumental is also very satisfying. The high-pitched piano and ticking clocks give the tune a nice ominous feeling, very suitable. And Max's drums glue the track together, and it sticks very well. Lyrically, hearkening back to the Eminem acknowledgement, it is about dissing this partner and their flaws, telling them to just straight up leave. Fantastic song, a highlight for the band in general. Never Know kind of became the forgotten child of this album, which is really unfortunate because this is another one of my favorites here. The song is easily the closest the band gets to finding their original selves. The drums are punchy, the guitar riff is loud but not too abrasive, and there's actually a bass line here. Cody sounds like he's having the time of his life while he's singing on here, much like most of Duality, a feeling that seems to be much more scarce on this record. Lyrically, it's back to being a bit more motivational, not knowing what could happen unless you take a shot. Great song, definitely worth revisiting. Crutch tries to be a little bit of a slower track, but it doesn't really succeed at doing that. The chorus packs way too much of a punch than is required for this type of song, which is lyrically about being in this negative relationship where he's constantly holding up his partner, but they don't repay the favors, so they're just using him like a crutch. The instrumental on the verses is pretty anticlimactic, mainly just some light plucky synth work and some airy percussion and snaps. It's yet another big gap in the band sound, but in all honesty, I still enjoy it anyway. And finally, the closer, Me Without Us, is the ballad to close off the album, and out of all the ballads the band has done, this is probably the weakest. I mean, come on, Miss Mysterious, Missing You, Unopened Windows, Dad's Song, this just pales in comparison to everything else. The flat guitar melody falling across the entire track, and the mundane drums on the chorus don't really strike that ballad note, and the final climax on the chorus is pretty vapid aside from Cody's typically lively vocals. Lyrically, I mean the title is pretty telling, there's no me without us. While it's not the most inviting or appropriate ballad, the song is still sold by Cody singing, so yeah, it's not bad. Overall, out of all the Set It Off albums out there, this one is probably my least favorite. In all honesty though, I don't think the band have a bad album in them, but this one definitely doesn't stand out or even have as nearly as much unique material as previous or even future albums. Regardless, still good, but it is the low point of the band, so I'm feeling a 7 out of 10 on this album. Well guys, 
Hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.